Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna to be unboxing and checking out the U3824 DW 38 inch ultra wide. If at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there'll be Dell.com links below, maybe Amazon links below, but probably from Dell because I think that's the only place you can get it. But yeah, links below if you wanna check it out. Let's get this unboxed. All right, so I'm not picking this up because this is a very heavy box, but the unboxing process should be pretty easy. This is the ultimate productivity monitor. Whether you're into color accurate work or whatever, this is gonna be great. All right, firstly, we have a USB-C cable, an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, and then a USB Type-C to USB Type-A. Then we have your power cable, which looks like there is an internal power supply, which is a lot of times what Dell does, and that's great for replacing your power cable. It's super cheap to replace these. Then in here, it looks like we have the base of the stand, which is actually quite small considering the 38 inches. Yeah, this is quite heavy. Plastic on the top, but a metallic look, and then a lot of metal on the bottom there. So this is pretty heavy, tons of rubber here, and a high quality thumb screw. Then looks like on this side, we have the height adjustable part of the stand, which again has that plastic covering, metallic finish, some cable management right here, and a nice lock-in stand there. So to put these together, fairly large components, but honestly not too bad. Line them up and then use the thumb screw, screw them in, and you're done. Now, I've actually used this stand before and reviewed the previous generation, I believe. And the nice thing with this stand is even though it does take up a little bit of space on your desk, you can put stuff like your phone and everything else like that on it. It doesn't have like an angle design. So this is actually usable desk space. But enough talking, let's get to the monitor. We're gonna lift this off the top. And then they have a nice little cutout because this is a lock-in stand. So all we're gonna do is grab the stand, line it up with the top, those top holes right there, slide it in and press down. And that should be locked in. And there we go. Very, very secure, great packaging. We'll just pull off these, these pieces back here and the cardboard comes off. You can see how they package it with the foam in there, so that's super nice. And then the covering here, and even more, this is very, very carefully packaged, so it will probably come to your doorstep unbroken. And I don't know if you can see, this is not actually foam, this is bubble, like this is bubble wrap kind of stuff. All right, now with it on the desk, it's big. It's really big, and I love every second of it. So it's slightly curved, which honestly, I prefer. Um, I've used flat ultrawides up to 40 inches or 42 inches, I do prefer a slight curve. This is not too much of a curve where it'll really ever be an issue for 95% of people that I show these ultrawides with these slight curves. You can see here, not a massive curve. It just gives you that clear look. Also, a lot of like gaming monitors won't have a uniform curve. This is much more uniform. It's not flat in the center and then curves out. It's very uniform across it. So that does make a difference. Looks like across the top, we have some heat and ventilation there. Let's also check the bottom as I'm assuming there's gonna be some ports down here. Like I assumed there's two USB type C ports and then a USB type A port. Super great placement there. Now, one of the things is it does have a KVM switch so you can plug in all of your mouse, keyboard, and your maybe your camera for your FaceTime calls or whatever you wanna do. And then you can switch between different, maybe your PC or your Mac or your different devices without changing your mouse and keyboard. So that's super nice. Let's go around the back of this behemoth. And firstly, we can see, okay, there's the power button and there is like the controls. I don't mind it too much for this because most people won't have two of these side by side, but when you do put the controls over here, it is difficult to get to if it is side by side, but Looks like you can also get under it. So nice, a joystick with a power button, pretty basic. Now under here is where we have a lot of stuff going on. You have the power here with the integrated power supply. You have two HDMIs here. You have a display port, a USB type C with video connectivity. So it's a display USB type C with this one has up to 90 watts of charging. So if you do have like a MacBook Pro, you can actually charge that thing while also doing display with one cable. That is awesome, it cleans up your desk a lot. Then we've got a 3.5 millimeter jack, a USB type C, four USB type A's, and then an actually an ethernet in this thing. So a massive amount of ports. Once you get this thing set up, you're good to go. You got your KVM. If you wanna plug in your MacBook Pro, that's one USB type C cable. This thing is awesome for that. But that's enough talk. Let's get it on the desk. Let's check it out and go through everything this thing has to offer. All right, guys, now we're gonna turn it on with that power button. We have a small light right here that tells us that it's on. All right, now this has a few things. Firstly, this is an IPS black panel, which means instead of having a 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio, this has a 2,000 to 1 contrast ratio. So blacks are definitely deeper, noticeably deeper, not as good as a VA panel, 
And it's not something where I would for sure buy an IPS black over just a standard IPS. It's not something that's that big of a difference. Uh, but it is super nice to have on a panel like this where you could be doing a lot of photo and video editing. But let's go into the menu system and check everything out. So we have our menu system down there. Here's the brightness and contrast. We're gonna turn this all the way up and it gets reasonably bright, not overly bright, but pretty standard for like an office or uh, editing productivity style monitor. This is something, however, that does do color very well. So let's go into these modes. We have standard, movie, game, here we can adjust our color temperature. So we have 5,500, we can do 5,000, 57, 65, 75, 93, and 10,000 Kelvins. We're gonna just leave that at 65. We can lock this into color mode, sRGB. This is covering 100% of the sRGB, 100% of the Rec. 709, and 98% of the DCI P3, and 98% of the Display P3. You also have custom color and change a lot of different things. This is something I love about these monitors. They give you a lot of control here. We're just gonna go up and leave it in standard for now. Down to display, we have our response time settings. If you do wanna occasionally game with this, aspect ratio, sharpness, then we have our picture in picture and picture by picture. So you can add multiple displays to this one display, multiple different, you might have your Mac on half the display and then your PC on the other half of the display or in a corner, or really whatever you want. Then we have all of our USB and KVM settings, audio because this does have speakers and then a bunch of other stuff and tons of settings to change and mess around with. So not only does this have great color, we're gonna test that in the full review, subscribe below for that, but let's just go in and check some stuff out. So firstly, this is only 60 Hertz. It's only going to be 60 Hertz. You're not getting a faster refresh rate here. It's just going to be max at that 60 Hertz. However, let's see if this thing could output more than eight bits of color, which I expect that it can. And there we go, 10 bits of color. All right guys, so with it up, it is an absolutely beautiful image. You don't notice a massive difference between this and IPS black. It will definitely be a slight difference. The blacks are gonna be a little bit deeper, but not a ginormous difference. Don't expect that here. That's not the biggest selling factor. Biggest selling factor here is gonna be great color gamut support. You have a higher resolution uh, and a bigger screen size. So this is not a 4K resolution. I think they call it 4K. It's 3840 by 1600. Um, so 3840 would be 4K in a 16 by nine, but this being an ultra wide, you're not actually gonna get 4K. I think the PPI here or pixels per inch, how crisp and clear this is actually going to appear to your eye. That's about, I think 110, which is slightly higher than like what a 1440p 27 inch monitor would be. So you still, like we can see down here with text, it's not the absolute clearest in the world, but it's definitely not pixelated. So it's actually a good resolution to screen size. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Would I personally like a actual 4K resolution? Absolutely, but at the price point that it's at, it's actually pretty good. This is around, I think a little bit over $1,500. And I think currently it's on sale for around 1100. And I would assume that this would consistently be on sale for that price. It's very, very good, especially if you want something that you can do color accurate work on being an ultra wide. I mean, just an editing machine. I've considered getting one of these so many times just to be on my main editing desk, but I do actually want that higher refresh rate. But if you're just doing productivity, absolutely amazing. But yeah, again, if you want to check it out, Dell.com links below if you want to check out the specs and whatever. But coming in just a few days will be the absolute full review on it. I'll go in depth, do testing, color accuracy tests, everything like that. But yeah, this was Type C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.